please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, just a few minutes, a uh, few seconds perhaps before we get to the pre-opening rates. Uh, uh, Sandeep, uh, uh, well, what's your sense? Is the market likely to uh, test that uh, four-figure number now? It's not a long way. Well, I think there is a good chance that the same could be tested in the coming three, four weeks because we are still not out of woods. Uh, the, the news flow or uh, the international uh, uh, landscape is not getting altered in our favor. Yes, I think the pain point is over, but is it going to be positive for us? It's not there. But a point to be noted, uh, Lata, is that the market sentiment uh, for quite uh, some time in the last two years were at the highest when the earning traction was at the lowest. Mm. And now when our earning traction is at the highest, I think the sentiments are at the lowest. So you are going to see some kind of a resettlement happening. But I think for a longer term investor, it's going to give them good term, uh, good long term opportunities. So that reshuffling is happening. But in that reshuffle, the uh, four figure level could be tested. Okay, four figure level could be tested. I think we have a, okay, a minute to go before the pre-opening rates kick in. Sandeep, um, the positive is coming from commercial vehicle sales this time. Tata Motors, we were discussing, has reported very good sales. You think there's more scope for names like Ashok Leyland? Well, I think the entire sector, if you see, uh, you know, the way the, the figures are moving, I think the entire uh, auto pack, uh, the, I think one figure came out, uh, especially on the passenger car segment, it has grown up 25 times in the last 25 years. I think uh, that those kind of uh, figures gives us some kind of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, uh, basing uh, of a conclusion that uh, the sector could be doing well. Maybe the CV, definitely the uh, passenger car and also the two-wheelers. I think this sector could find its place under the sun in this next uh, six months. Okay. What, what, where would you take shelter if you're expecting that in the next three to four weeks we are going to plumb some new lows, uh, new recent lows, uh, where would you take shelter? Well, I think the, it's not a flight towards uh, safety, Lata. I think it's just trying to find some kind of a safer haven. I think it's definitely going to be IT because of uh, all the pain what it has undergone and some kind of attraction which it is exhibiting. So large cap ITs will give you some kind of a sucre, followed by auto. I think energy and uh, uh, healthcare are still some time away from giving you some kind of a stability. These two sectors would be the ones which will offer that. Okay. Well, we are getting the first rates and initially it did show a 0.8% uh, fall, but at the moment it's uh, indicating more like a half percent. Oh, okay, actually, Sensex is all over the place. Uh, maybe we just want to uh, look at uh, uh, State Bank and I, uh, sorry, ICICI and Axis Bank and check out. Uh, now, actually, the Nifty is showing flat terrain. Uh, ICICI Bank is starting with 10 lower. Will it get that bad, Sandeep? I think this is quite clearly wild, isn't it? Well, I think when uh, the pink paper starts splashing uh, adverse news, the trend doesn't stop uh, in few days. It probably goes on for a few months. So I think the drubbing what uh, some of the private sector banks are getting because of justified or maybe unjustified or maybe just whimsical reason, I don't think that's going to abate. So we are going to see this entire uh, pack maybe right now in a sell-on bounce-back mode. So you're going to see a lot of shorting happening there. So that's about it. Okay, well, a couple of more stocks uh, to look at this morning. Uh, Cadilla Health is surging. Uh, zero observations for one of its plants, so there's positive news flow over there. And on the downside, don't lose sight of Canfin Homes. Big knockdown there after the deal has been uh, has fallen through. So Canfin Homes now down about 10%. But we'll talk about that in more detail. Manisha Gupta also joins in to give us a quick roundup of all that's happening in the commodity space uh, this morning. Hi, Manisha. Good morning. Morning, Sonia. Thank you for that. Well, uh, the major cues, of course, coming in from the dollar index, which gained half a percent in the previous week, but was down 2% for the quarter. And today, uh, this quarter has started on a weaker note as well. So you have seen support coming from many commodities. Crude oil prices, to begin with, ended the month of March with 5% gains, and we are looking at half a percent of gain on the first day itself. Well, you have seen the U.S. drillers cut down nearly half a dozen of oil rigs, and that has been supportive. The reports do suggest strong global demand. OPEC compliance has been on the higher side and the weak US dollar have been supportive for the crude oil prices. Not such a great news for India because we have seen the diesel prices over the weekend hit a record high in the Indian markets. So that is something to keep an eye on. But the China retaliating on the US import tariff or duties is gold positive, which has started this quarter nearly half a percent on the higher side. The gold also has seen buying on the back of the weak US dollar. And of course, with the way the global equity markets are reacting, you have seen some money finally flow into this one. 
If you look at the Chinese metal prices in the meanwhile, uh, the steel prices have started 2% on the higher side. Iron ore is trading 1.5% up as well. But then, uh, you know, the trading is quite muted because many of the Asian and the European countries are still not participating because of the Easter weekend. So we are looking at lower volumes but stronger buying uh, initiatives as we start a new week and a quarter. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, at least for ending it on a green note, uh, uh, Manisha. We are seeing some bit of green at the moment. I don't know how much of it uh, will hold. Uh, let's welcome uh, uh, S.P. Tulsian uh, uh, of sptulsian.com into the conversation. In a bit, we're going to be joined by Uday Mukherjee as well. Uh, good morning, Mr. Tulsian. Uh, first, the oil marketing companies, as Manisha was just telling us, the domestic prices are at four-year highs. Do you think in an election year, uh, they will have to bear more of the burden rather than the government reducing excise? Uh, what is your approach to these companies? See, if we see the present trend, the, the way o OMCs are increasing the retail prices, definitely that is seen to quite, you know, causing a lot of hardship to the retail. But that is not, in fact, disturbing their marketing margin because, in fact, it is other way around. If they would not have raised the prices, mm. uh, uh, though the prices have risen to all-time high for diesel and four years for petrol. But that is, in fact, seen to be their margins seem to be intact, number one. Number two, their OMCs are all, uh, sorry, the, the refining margins seem to be, you know, have inched up in this last maybe one month globally also. Singapore benchmark has risen by about $1 per barrel. So that is also seen to be quite positive. So I'm not able to understand the reason for taking a call on OMCs purely from the factor of the shrinkage to be seen in their marketing margin. In fact, it is other way around. Now, let, let's wait for the Karnataka, uh, Karnataka uh, elections to get over. I don't think that that has that that will also be seen you know causing a lot of pressure you know on the on the oil oil marketing company if i take a broader perspective i may have the you know grudges against this kind of price rise in the seen by the omcs but if i purely focus from omcs i honestly don't see any reason for taking a negative call on omcs Okay, well, uh, let's also take a look at what's happening with Fortis because remember, the stock fell quite a bit on Wednesday. It was down 14% and now we understand reports indicating that minority shareholders could be opposing that deal. Bit of a recovery there but pales in comparison to the fall that we saw on Wednesday. Any quick thoughts, Sandeep, before we let you go on this deal? Well, I think it's going to be a long-drawn battle. I don't think anything is going to get sorted out in uh, next six months. So uh, it's only for uh, deep-pocket, long-term patient investors, not for traders or scalpers. Oh, yes, uh, point taken. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Sandeep, uh, and have a great uh, uh, trading week ahead. This one is a full one. Uh, we have even the monetary policy coming, and I guess uh, uh, results season the week after. Well, uh, Uden Mukherjee has also joined us now. Good morning, Uden. Uh, well, there's so much uh, news on our plate. Let's start with the banks. Uh, I mean, do you think that uh, uh, so much of uh, negativity around the leadership of both uh, ICICI and now to a lesser extent Axis uh, is going to prey on these stocks for some time now? Morning, Lata. It will, I'm afraid, because I think it's sentiment negative, if nothing else. It's also an evolving situation, so we are not sure how this cookie will eventually crumble. I mean, there are allegations and counter-allegations and denials, as you would have expected. So it, while it does not look great, the chain of circumstances, it's not easy to actually point a finger and say that the evidence is conclusive. Mm. And the ICICI Bank Board has come out strongly denying any kind of allegations of wrongdoing and supporting Chanda Kocher as they would have, as you would have expected them to. But, you know, it comes on the back of such a bad or ugly turn of events with the Punjab National Bank and the Nirav Modi case. Anyway, sentiment was quite bad. And I think global investors who are sitting outside who own a quite a bit of ICICI Bank, I imagine, would be skittish. I mean, they would have been skittish by the turn, uh, by the kind of news flow that has come out on PSU banks. And ICICI Bank has always got, you know, a quasi-PSU bank kind of a valuation from the street. It's never got the premium private sector bank valuation. And that f kind of feeling will get endorsed by the news flow which is swirling around right now. So this is not to say that uh, the management is culpable. We don't have enough evidence, at least does yet, to, uh, to talk about that. But sentiment will be affected, and sentiment always has a big bearing on valuations. So it wouldn't be surprising if ICICI Bank, and particularly and even Axis Bank, actually get dragged down and underperform the overall banking sector. But coupled with the PSU banks, this is not great news for the bank nifty, and it will continue probably to be a bit of a drag on the overall nifty and market sentiment. 
Okay, yes, it has actually. The sentiment has been soured quite a bit. ICICI Bank is now down towards percent. Karnataka Bank, IDBI Bank. By the way, Canfin Homes is uh, cracking now, seven percent lower. And quality, don't lose sight of that. Last week it lost thirty percent. Quality is down another ten percent after the company informed the exchanges about one of the investors alleging some fraudulent sale of shares in the company. So all of that is dragging quality down further. Um, uh, then I'll just come back to you before uh, we let Mr. Tulsian go. I wanted one. One more uh, word from him on Canfin Homes. Mr. Tulsian, uh, Canara Bank has called off the divestment and the. Okay, we'll go back to uh, Mr. Tulsian in a bit. Oh, then, uh, good morning. What about the market? Do you think all of this could sort of sour the sentiment further? Because although we did see a minor bit of recovery last week, it seems like the trend could be, uh, you know, could continue to be on the downside. Uh, your thoughts? You know, uh, Sonia, my sense is that looking at the way the market's been moving over the last one week, there is a clear loss of momentum on both sides. I mean, we are, I mean, the last, the action of the last couple of months uh, is clear to demonstrate that the upward momentum has been, has been lost. The market attempts these sporadic pullback rallies; they don't last very long, and maybe a couple of hundred points on the Nifty, and then we come back to where we started from. Mm. So that kind of upward momentum is no longer visible in the market, but equally. You know, after two such bad series, I mean, February and March both were awful for the market. I mean, we lost about a thousand Nifty points. Now it seems like some of the downward momentum has also got a bit dissipated. That doesn't mean that the market cannot seek lower levels, but may not do that immediately, because you know, you lost some 600 points in February, you lost 300 points in March. You cannot go on falling at this rate every every FNO series. So it's conceivable that the mark, what the price action is suggesting right now, is that the market needs to probably just tread water for some time, digest the losses of the last couple of series, mm -hmm. and maybe even attempt a couple of pullbacks, and then probably seek lower levels. So my sense is that we've got a loss of momentum on both sides, and unless you're presented with fresh negative news, which can come from anywhere, ICICI Bank included, that might propel the market to lower levels, but in itself, maybe the market just treads water between that 9,900, 10,300 kind of levels, and uh, we'll see how things pan out, uh, maybe in a series. So April, there are chances that we have a flattish, consolidating, range-bound kind of series after two very bad ones. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how the news flow turns out in May. Okay. Well, I just want to get a quick word in on Bajaj Auto sales. They've just come yeah. out uh, on the exchanges. The overall sales have gone up by about 23-odd percent. It's lower than street estimates, coming in at 3.34 lakh units. Now, the reason why it's lower is because the management says that in their export sales, 26,000 units have been stuck in transit. So, they've excluded that from their overall sales. That's why exports are lower than estimated. Otherwise, it looks like an okay set of numbers. Um, 23% overall growth. Domestic sales have gone up by about 20 odd percent or so. And uh, their motorcycle sales have also done okay. About 11% growth is what they've seen. What, but vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis expectations? No, as I said, the ex it's lower than expectations because the management says that 26,000 units were stuck in transit okay. uh, for export. So that's why the number has come in below expectations. But if you add that back, it's absolutely in line. Okay, so well, uh, we've got we're getting auto sales numbers which are good. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, then that's the uh, dichotomy. We're getting micro numbers that are still quite positive. Uh, you know, a bunch of the uh, PMI numbers, uh, uh, um, uh, CV numbers, other auto numbers have all been very good, but. Uh, it's these niggling macros. Uh, crude is at seventy dollars. Uh, it is an election year. There is a lot of negative noise, probably, which will continue trying to break bank promoter nexus, or we don't know what. Uh, so, you know, at such a time, how if you have to take a longer view of the market, would you say it'll be very ranged or plumb lower? The news flow is not great, Latan. You know, that has a bearing in the short to medium term of where markets or prices will move. Uh, there are two issues. You're right in pointing out that some of the micro-level news is not bad. It's not excellent yet, but it's not bad. And on the margin, it is the only positive that the market can cling on to. But there are two issues out there. One is, at the micro-level, we're getting corporate news which is not great. You know, these scams large private sector banks under some kind of a cloud. This is micro news and it's not supporting the market. In mm. fact, it is taking away from some of the positive sentiment which earnings or 
some of these fast moving indicators are beginning to tell us so you know that i think is a little bit of a problem for the market at this point also the macro news is not getting better and on the margin is getting worse you know if you ask people privately they will tell you that they had expected january and february gst numbers to be much better than what it has been like mm -hmm. and gst is a problem because we are getting stuck in the mid 80000 crores 84 86000 and the year is passing so you should not be in a situation where at the end of the year you find out that actually gst numbers are a big shortfall because bond deals have started to just ease off a little bit and they will start galloping away once again if the gst numbers turn out to be quite a bit lower than expected crude technically is not looking good you know you ask any chartist they will tell you that there mm -hmm. is a s s kind of a breakout which the crude chart is telling you now and if that starts moving towards 75 80 dollars you've got a bigger macro problem on your hands that's why i said may because you know if you have another month of gst problems you have crude at 75 dollars and then you run into a karnataka election in the middle of may with where the result is not what the market wants you could have a much bigger leg down once again so i think the macro news is such that it's difficult to say that the market's bottoming out but for longer term investors the question you asked i think if the earnings recovery continues quarter after quarter then i think it those bad days prompted by macro would be good accumulation zones for longer term investors okay well for now at least in pre opening it's not too bad it's an indication that the nifty might open about 40 points higher uh what the banks are showing on the downside is being compensated by some of the auto and oil and gas stocks on the upside so all autos are higher tata motors maruti mnm reliance is also up about 2 or percent or so and a couple of it names wipro infosys are looking good um udin what about this whole trade war escalating how do you see that play out uh, i mean you know as of this morning china is going to impose uh, tariffs on about 130 us products or so do you think all of that could make the global situation a bit murkier we don't want that sonia to happen because you know we are grappling with our own macro issues at this point in time and this is a wild straw which is floating around uh, this global ta trade war problem and if that escalates at some point of the markets globally start getting nervous uh, then i think you will have another problem